Hi, it's Katrina Mitchell with Speak, and I'm delighted to be here with Greg Nathan. And Greg, what I want to talk about in this clip is your very, very unique process that I think is so amazing, so phenomenal, and really helps extract the collective intelligence of the room. And you call that a group scoop. Would you talk a little bit about this process and all of the different ways you've seen this benefit franchisor groups and, and franchisee uh, teams as well? Yeah, thank you. I had sat in on many franchisee meetings where we've got, let's say, a group. It could be 50 to 250 franchisees in a room together and watch the room go negative. It's almost like watching a car crash in slow motion as one person would stand up in the audience and say, I have a problem with this and I want to know about that. And then someone else would go, yeah, I, have, I think that too. And suddenly you get this sort of mob mentality form, forming. And whoever's out the front, which is, it could be the CEO or the marketing manager or a few franchise or executives, end up getting beaten up. And later on, the franchisees may, may think, oh, we really showed them, didn't we? But it leaves a very negative taste in, in people's mouths, particularly the franchise or executives that had to face into that. And so they say, look, we're never gonna have an open forum again or a town hall meeting again, that was dreadful. And I thought there's got to be a better way to to get people expressing their honest uh, concerns, but in a way that was respectful and constructive. And so um, uh, your process, and it's so great. I know, I know, gosh, several years ago, you wrote a tip, one of your two minute tips on no more town hall meetings. And it's just such yes. a great way to keep the quasi leaders or the naysayers from kind of taking the whole direction of the conversation into a negative place. You do this, it, it's a very structured, very um, exact process, but it brings out all of this positive, creative contribution from the franchisees and they feel heard and they feel like they are making a contribution to the, to the discussion uh, of the system. So talk a little bit about how you do it. Sure. I think the first thing, Katrina, is uh, to, to understand that process and systems apply to human interactions as well as to things like engineering and operational procedures in a business. And if you do things in a certain, in a certain way, in a certain order, you're likely to get a, a predictable result. And we find this in psychology and, and social interactions. So we call this process management. And the group scoop is a process. It's like a recipe. If you follow the recipe and you put in the ingredients in the right way and you cook something at the right heat, you're going to get a predictable result. So the first thing we do is we have people seated in small groups of six to eight is typically a size, round tables in a, in a room, uh, rather than having them lined up where they can't interact with each other. I, I believe it's important to have somebody who is a leader of each small group or each round table, and that is normally a franchisee. So I meet with the franchisee group leaders beforehand, and there may be, if there were six tables, you'd have six. If there was 20 tables, you'd have 20. And I explain to them what I need them to do. And so basically, the, a question is put to the room. And the question might be something like, um, what did you like about the latest um, marketing program and there could be a second question how could we improve on this next time so there's really two questions now what they do is everybody writes down their their responses individually in the room to those two questions so everybody's starting to think what do i really think about this issue this is me not not other people and having written that down each individual in the room can refer back to their thoughts or feelings. That's the first important thing. Then the group leaders get each person in their group to share one idea of what they've written down. And if somebody has something similar to what's already been said, they can either say what I had written down has already been said or they add something new. So every table in the room is creating a group list. And everybody on each table has the opportunity to contribute to that list. So now, if we had 100 people in the room, 100 people have contributed what they honestly think or feel about the topic to these group lists. 
We then collect a, a response from each small group. So I go around the room and I say, table number one, give me one of your thoughts to this question we just put out. Table number two. So very quickly we've scanned the whole room and every table now has contributed an idea or a thought in relation to the question. So the whole room is involved. Yes. Everybody has contributed. It's very democratic. We've taken the power away from individuals to railroad or sidetrack the meeting. And the way we frame up the question, we normally say be respectful, be solution focused. But other than that, you can ask anything. Now, often a, a, a good question will bring out some, some great thoughts that can be put to the franchise or executive and they can respond to that. So that's basically how we collect the information that's going on in people's minds in the room. That's why we call it a group scoop. But there is a second element to this. So um, did you have any questions, Katrina, just on no, the first part? I, I think it's. I just think it's brilliant. I've I've been part of this process many, many, many times over the years with you, and I just it never ceases to amaze me how positive, creative, and like abundant the solutions are that come out of this process. Mm. So go ahead and and talk about the second piece. Well, the, the second element to this, particularly if a group is going through change, and most groups are. Now, when there's change, it brings up questions, frustrations, and challenges. So what we do is we list out the what are the concerns or the questions that people in the room have, and the franchise or executives do not respond immediately to these, but they do clarify anything they don't quite understand. So they may say to, to a table that's put up a question, did you mean this or did you mean that? So we, we could end up with 20 or 30 questions, and they're typically typed up using a data projector up onto a screen. So now everybody has now got their thoughts as a room up on the screen. And I recommend that the franchise or executives have the opportunity to take those questions away, consider them, discuss them, debate them, and come up with an intelligent, considered response. So that at a conference, it might be the responses are on day two of the conference. Now what I find is, Getting all those questions and concerns out early in the conference or the meeting clears the air yes. so people can now focus. Yeah. If you've got a motivational speaker coming in or educational session, their minds are clear to absorb that. Yeah. And then on day two or later on in the conference, the franchise or executives come back and say, thank you for your questions and your thoughts. We'd now like to respond. And very uh, specifically and sharply, they respond to each question. And we set that up and we say to the franchisees, this is not a political rally. So <clears throat> the franchisors are not just going to give you fluff and spin and try and make you feel good. They're going to give you honest, straightforward answers. Are you okay with that? And the franchisees say, please, just if the answer is no to a request, just tell us. But tell us why. And we find that those responses can usually be done in about 45 minutes and people have got responses to their questions, everyone's on the same page, and we, we move forward, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, I just think that's brilliant, and I know we don't have time to go into it uh, in this clip, but I know that there have been many, many situations where you've been brought in because there's a great deal of strife, um, and, and mm. things are really bubbling up and getting very, very heated, and through taking the franchisor team, leadership team, and the franchisees through this process, You've been able to really just dissipate all of that upset and get everybody pulling together in the same direction again. And I, I it's great. Yeah. It's great. And we talked in another clip about the franchise or wheel of excellence. And one of the pieces, remember, was listen to franchisee feedback. We devoted 20% of the real estate on that wheel to listening. And the group scoop is a very practical, powerful way for franchisors to listen to a, to a group of franchisees at once and keep it constructive and yeah. educational for everyone. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, Greg. Really appreciate your time and sharing this invaluable information with the community. Yeah, and, and thank you everyone for listening.